Hello, my name is Davina Artaby, and this is a summary of the ELT chat that took place on June 22, 2016, entitled, How Do We Ensure Students Have a Sense of Progress? At first, the conversation centered around why students need to have a sense of progress. Reasons given were that without it, students stop working and even going to class and that it's important for learner autonomy. Naomi brought up student grit and linked to a TED talk about it, which can be found at the end of this summary. A sense of progress was also seen as being essential for motivation. It was also tied to self-image. Proprioception was also mentioned and a link to an Adrian Underhill talk on that topic was provided and can be found at the end of this summary. On to some general ideas that were discussed on measuring progress. First, it was mentioned that how progress is measured depends on the type of course. For example, in an exam class, a practice test can be used, but in a general English class, real-life situations would be more helpful. Angelus commented that some students get demotivated with graded tests, but that real-life situations enable them to see they can do things they weren't able to do before. In addition, progress is easier to measure in a course with behavioral objectives than one with structural objectives. Glennis agreed with this, pointing out that progress in grammar and vocabulary doesn't necessarily mean better writing or speaking in the real world. Other ideas that came up were that task-based classes create puzzle pieces for success on the final task. Also that student knowledge of methodology is important for their recognition of their own progress and that performing well on authentic tasks is a way to measure progress. Finally, that it's important for students to both receive feedback and reflective prompts. Now for some strategies teachers can use to measure student progress. First, at both the beginning and end of a course, students can be recorded, given the same dictation, or even given the same placement test. With regards to recording students, Marisa said that voice tools like VoiceThread and VoxoPop allow students to go back and review their progress. Links to both of these resources are at the end of this summary. Julia with Wandering ELT concurred, saying that she has used recordings with her exam preparation class, which worked really well because her students could hear improvement and felt confident for the exam. Other strategies include signposting lesson stages, having students write summaries at the end of class, and giving diplomas for achievements. Last, time to complete a task and post-reading and listening discussions were given as strategies. Several ways that students can use to measure their own progress were mentioned, such as blogging, Quizlet, can-do statements, and picking their own goals and testing themselves against them. A fourth strategy was to have students keep progress charts. Angelus wondered if these charts were more like checklists, though. Naomi responded that some are checklists, but it helps to see they are reaching the goals needed. Glennis agreed, adding, especially if students create their own checklist for their individual problems. A couple of ways teachers and students can collaboratively measure student progress are to have feedback discussions in the student's native language for lower levels and or at the end of each lesson to elicit from students what they know now that they didn't know at the beginning of the lesson. Some challenges to measuring progress that came up were that even though students make progress in a class, they still might not be able to pass their national exam. Also, that it's easier to realize progress in an English-speaking country than in a non-English-speaking country. 
and that progress takes time and might not be seen right away. Other concerns were that while digital tools can be helpful, they require training, that reading and listening are hard to self-assess, and that receptive skills are more difficult to observe than productive skills. Glennis pointed out that when she could read Emile Zola in French, she knew she had made a lot of progress. Hada agreed, writing she got a feeling of progress when she could understand radio broadcasts. Last, there was some concern about how easy it is for beginners to see progress, yet how difficult it is for higher levels to see progress. Marisa pointed out the dreaded intermediate plateau, while Hada asked if progress actually slows down or if it's just less obvious. She thinks it's actually just less obvious. Julia with Wandering ELT said that she finds some higher level students lack self-confidence and need to be reminded of the progress they've made. Here are a list of resources linked to in the chat. Thank you for watching and listening. Goodbye.